Hello boys and girls, a quick video on how to open up and inspect your used oil filter. Now this is something you can do on a regular basis. I, I would probably recommend, especially if you have a, a high mileage car, an older car, you may want to do this every, every other oil change. Just to see if there's anything going on inside your engine. Let's say, for example, if you see if you do find metal shavings, little, little, tiny little spectacles, metal uh, particles before the engine starts to knock, because you know if you do have uh, metal particles inside your engine, it is too late. It's just a matter of time how and when it's gonna fail. But you could probably make it last a little longer if you use something like Lucas Oil Stabilizer, you know, that, that thick stuff that you put inside your engine uh, with your engine oil. I actually had a guy with a 07 Nissan Frontier. It's the 4.0 V6 engine, good engines. The the truck had 220 or 250,000 miles, a lot, a lot of miles, and it started to knock. And he wanted to replace the uh, rod bearings. And as you may know or not, it, it is a lot of work and it just wasn't worth it at the time to replace the rod bearings. The engine was already knocking at a certain RPM, I believe it was around 3000. So from that point on, I actually took the oil filter apart, did an inspection like I'm gonna right now and I did find uh, you know tiny little particles. And I told the guy, listen man, if I'm gonna start digging, I'm gonna find more and more stuff that's probably ready to replace with this kind of high mileage car. You know, it's not a, it's not a semi truck diesel engine where it's a regular maintenance kind of every seven hundred thousand, five hundred thousand, sometimes sometimes a million depends uh, uh, what engine you have. Since this engine was already knocking, I told I told him to start using Lucas Oil and it actually did not knock anymore he was taking it easy and the engine lasted for almost another year until it failed on the highway last compression had to get towed anyways let's get to the filter all right so this is a mobile one filter now the main tool you want to use is these kind of sheet metal cutters or snips as they call them and what you do, if that's the only tool you have, what you do is you start cutting right over here. This is the hard part. If you have any other cutters like these, this will make your day a bit easier just to get it going. So I'm using the table to press it down. Okay. It's, it's tough because there's several layers of metal on this edge around here. So once I, um, I get through that, back to the snips. And now once you get going, it's actually very easy. There we go. Now the reason why you want to use a tool like this instead of a, a power tool, a grinder for example, because you want to avoid bringing any particles from the outside inside the filter. Should be obvious. So this filter has about, I'm going to guess now, maybe two, three hundred miles on it, maybe a bit more, but it has half of those miles, maybe more, uh, were on E85. And as some of you may know, E85, if you're running E85, some of that ethanol will get through the piston rings and into the oil. I can actually smell the ethanol and you don't want that. I mean, you know, there's no way around it. Catch cans can help get rid of that, some of that stuff. I am running three catch cans. 
but you uh, you probably want to replace your oil after each track day. Anyways, I'm gonna take a look inside here. I don't know if you can see the, see anything or not. Now, don't be fooled by these bubbles. I do have bubbles in this oil. I'm trying to get rid of the bubbles. I do see a little bit of shiny stuff. Remember, this is a, a brand new engine. So, I'm not surprised there is some stuff in there. Alright, let's get to the actual filter. As the oil comes in from the engine, it goes through these holes which would be more or less like that goes in here comes out from the middle back to your engine so in out so just to make this more visible instead of just going like this you know because you know you can start checking but just by doing this i'm going to cut this paper out and i'm going to be able to have a better visual Ouch, ouch, ouch. Don't cut yourself. All right, there was blood. I don't know how YouTube works, but they don't want to show blood. Anyways, back to cutting. And here we go. Now I'm looking at this black dot. Yeah, this is soft. This is probably RTV. Yeah, it's yeah. It's nothing. Ignore these shiny little guys that's from cutting uh, the filter all right more of this black stuff some dirt or something doesn't feel like metal and it's black. And it does look like metal, kind of. It does have a shine to it. Put this aside. And keep going. Oh, this is part of the filter. Yeah, so this is uh, questionable. This also could be part of the thrust bearing. You know, the crankshaft likes to walk a little bit. There is a tiny amount of play back and forth. On the crankshaft and that's what the uh, thrust bearings are for so yeah it does look like well I don't know at this point but it's one piece and it's still this engine has I believe about a thousand miles on it right now and that is it guys that's how you check your used oil filter like I said before, this is mainly to, to catch early on if there's something bad going on inside your engine. And if you do catch something, the bill for the repairs will be less if you want to fix your engine, replace rod bearings, other stuff. All right, thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.